Remember, I framed this question in the very beginning as can I lose a device from my rear pockets completely? And I think the answer is yes. But as with most things YouTube and most things cycling, it's not that simple. Let me explain. For those of you new to the channel, we often do this, okay? We often have a bit of fun with some different devices and kind of see how they perform out on the road. So if you do like this kind of stuff, make sure you do subscribe to the channel and like these videos to keep you up to with what's happening in the future. For me to seriously run my phone as my bike computer, it has to do three things really well. The first is its form factor. Its form factor on the bike has to work. The second is it has to be stable. And the third is it has to last. Spoiler alert, it does not do all three. But I would very much argue that there's no bike computer that's currently doing all three as well. So let's go through each of them. When I was initially concerned about the form factor, I had that image in my head of like the big like thing sitting up here and just to be honest, full Hubbard spec, okay? That's what I was particularly concerned about. Guys, I just am blown away by the form factor. The guys at Quadlock, Australian company. Like I'm just so stoked by that. They've done an absolutely fantastic job with this. Just nailed it, absolutely nailed it. Good Aussie crew who have just really come good with this. You cannot beat this. I'd go as far as saying it's the best mount of any bike computer that I've seen. Right, someone made a really good point in the comment section actually when we started talking about it. I wouldn't have chosen to buy this phone if I was going to use it as my bike computer. We all have different phones. Like this is an iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's a freaking huge phone, okay? So it is not the perfect phone to use as a bike computer. If I was buying a phone to be my bike computer, I would not have probably purchased this phone in the first place. In practical terms, yeah, putting your phone out here has taken something out of my pockets, which is absolutely fantastic, but it hasn't actually made it that much of a lighter setup. Now, obviously I could shrink a good bit of that by having a much lighter phone, but well, we're not in a position to do that. So it's not a massive weight weenie advantage going down this path. Out here on the road, I definitely find that I'm realizing I'm now proving that wrong by riding without my hands on the bars. But you can certainly notice when you get little glass of wind, the bars being hit. It's, it's a big device. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is a big device. That's not aero. I mean, as aero as you can get an enormous phone on the front of your handlebars, that is probably adding some drag to your ride. When the boys at uh, Cupertino decided to design a phone, it probably wasn't its initial plan to put it down there. I haven't had any stability issues. I have had none to the point where, so I've tried riding with the Bolt, with this, I've tried riding with the 830 with this and I've simultaneously recorded data. And what I've done is I've sent that to, to Jesse to have a look at, and that's kind of what he does for a living at today's plan. He looks at workout files and he's kind of come back and said, yeah, look, if, if you'd just sent me this straight through, I would have gone there. Yeah, that's probably from some really good standard high-end bike computer. All the sensors that I've used are Bluetooth LE compatible. So obviously, Ant Plus is no good to you in these situations. You are completely re relying on Bluetooth LE. That's the same sort of connectivity protocol that, like the Apple Watch uses and stuff like that. The, the pedals, the ACM pedals use that. My uh, heart rate monitor uses that. And I also used a Wahoo speed sensor. As far as I've found so far, you need to use that kind of connectivity. So hopefully if you've seen guys, I am running the Wahoo Fitness app, which really is based on Mostly suggestions from you guys. When it sort of came down to it, it did the features that I most wanted or most sort of prioritized. I don't want to turn this into like specifically about this app because I'm kind of still hopeful that there's an app developer out there who can produce something more specific. And by that, look, it's not perfect, but I will say this, it seems very stable. I've tried to exit the app. Well, I have, I've gone into other apps, come back into it. It's been very, very stable, which super impressed by. The screen is incredible. It's incredible. Like it's unlike anything else. 
I'll obviously spend a lot more time customizing exactly what it's displaying, but holy hell, like, it's a, well, it's an iPhone screen <laughs> down there. Obviously the benefits of, of the touch screen of this device, which you know is really, really good. I've been using the Garmin a little bit again lately, and you just forget how crap that touch screen is in comparison to this, which I can remember was one of the reasons I originally went, man, I'd love to use my phone down here. One of the things that I was really interested in was what happens when my phone wants to be a phone? For example, I'm riding along and I get a phone call, or I'm riding along and three emails come in, or I'm, you know where I'm going with this, right? Obviously, you still get your notifications and everything, but they do seem less intrusive as when they sort of flash up on a, on a Garmin or on a Wahoo. So maybe that's just the nature, the size of the screen. It was always kind of one of my gripes with specifically the Garmin. Is you kind of get that beep, beep, beep. You're like, what? It's all too much. Whereas it's, I suppose it's a format you're kind of used to. In practicality terms, what happens is, yeah, your phone displays that it's ringing and you can choose to answer it or not. Notifications pop up on the screen as per how you have set them up, which is a sort of notification system that you're probably quite used to. Okay, that's all good and well. Let's have some fun. The real reason we're running a phone is we're gonna utilize some of its capabilities, all right? You know what's happening in the news right now? Let's ask Siri to help us out with something, shall we? Hey Siri, ask Elizabeth, do you need me to pick, do you want me to pick up any bread on the way home? Question mark. Send. So if the form factor works and it's super stable, well that's two out of three, but unfortunately, Two out of three is as far as we get. You guys were great in the comments in some of the previous videos talking about this, that it was going to be the major issue, and it is. Battery life is simply not up to scratch. So in my experience, a three hour ride would basically take me from 100% battery on my iPhone to approximately 20%. You're probably not gonna get a phone with a better battery life. 1400 milliamp battery, I just made that number up, by the way. So anyone who actually, actually knows what they're talking about, let us know, but you're certainly dealing with a phone with a good battery. To plot a curve of like my expectations and my hopes of this, it was like, oh, kind of moderately when I first started talking to you about it, and then like you guys started commenting and I'm like, oh, this isn't gonna work. Oh, this is pretty bad. Then the quad lock turned up and I'm like, oh, actually, that doesn't look as hard as I thought it was. I put it on the device. Actually, that's seriously not as hard as I thought it was. Then I started using it and I'm like, oh, you know, this is legitimately good. And then the battery died. And I'm like, oh. So let, let me set who this is probably definitely for. It's definitely for someone who's just starting riding a bike. They've got a phone, they can download a free app. You just get the best mount system known to man on your quad lock, shout out again and you're away, you are riding. Maybe we already knew that, but those guys, you are in a great position to record your data from the first pedal stroke. The other person who I think this is for is, well, someone who is really frustrated by bicycle computers when their connectivity lets them down. So we've had this discussion in the past, right, where you know your, your Bolt or your Garmin or something loses connection to your phone and all of a sudden you don't get those notifications coming up on your device. There are situations for me, especially given the time that I ride, that notification might be very, very important for what you're doing. You need to get home, you need to reply to that email, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think for that person, this device as a bike computer is fantastic. So if getting a notification from work that you have to reply to this email is more important than knowing exactly where the next left-hand turn is on the route that you've already uploaded to Strava, then I think this is a solution for you. Everyone has a phone. 
So the expense here, the outlay here is the mount. So go out, support an Aussie company, buy a bloody quad lock, and the worst thing that was happens, you don't use it. But the best thing that happens is every now and again you do put it on your bike, or maybe you put it on, I don't know, your commuter or something like that, and you have a really effective, pretty damn reliable way of recording data. What about me? Well, yeah, I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna use it all the time. I don't have to use it all the time if I don't want to. If I'm gonna go out and do a full hard training ride with the team, I'll probably use my bike computer. Or if I'm gonna go out and do a vlog ride with you guys, I'll probably just put it on and, and run the GoPro. Why not? Like, I, I kind of think that's my point, is that it's a bit of a, well, why not, really? So here's the question I'd like to frame to you. What is more likely, an app that makes the phone the solution or a bike computer that picks up on all the great stuff from the phone and turns it into the perfect solution. But look, for the record guys, I don't feel bad for trying this. I, I do think there's clearly value in it. And I kind of think it's one of these ones where like, I've made the investment now, and I think we'll be able to reap the benefits in six months when some young Sydney kid develops the perfect app. Speaking of young Sydney app developers, there's no segue here. I don't even know why I started with that segue. You think this is the first time I've done this? Damn it. Anyway, prize winners, jerseys, you guys, your jerseys are en route. Well, they're not quite en route, they're currently back there, but they will soon be en route to you. So be very, very excited. Speaking of prizes and giveaways and all that kind of stuff, we have some really exciting news coming up, guys. Really exciting news, actually. I'm pumped for this one. Stay tuned next week for that. It's, uh, it's an opportunity to be creative and win stuff. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't get better than that, okay? Guys, if you see me out over the weekend and I don't have a phone on front of my handlebars, feel free to give me a punch and say, I thought you said this was the thing, Chris. And I'll say, yeah, but sometimes I can't be bothered and I want to take pictures with it. All right, talk to you soon, guys. Bye now. device and the way I look at it is that